Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, people. Hello, people. Hello, people. <sighs> Can I undo computers? I do not have that much power. I'm sorry. Starseed Pilgrim, very good game. Very good game. Very good game. Okay, wait, we don't, this is silly. Because we don't, this comment must have been written back in the time when we had destructors. Which we do not any longer have. Okay, so Okay, so what is the problem we are solving? Uh, on the overworld, our undo files are very big and we have a long-term plan for how to deal with that so it's not that bad. 
but that plan involves forgetting things in order to let things fit, right? And so we, don't, we want to minimize how much we forget for a given amount of playtime. So in addition to doing that plan, which we're not implementing tonight, um, we also just want to make sure that we're reasonably efficient about the data being saved, uh, which in part involves saving it in an intelligent way, which we're also not really doing tonight. Um, because even before that is uh, making sure you're not doing something completely stupid. So that's what we're doing tonight, is we're trying to figure out if we're doing something completely stupid. So I'm just going to break this into categories. Like, I think this is going to be a small minority of the data, but, you know, I just want to know how much it is. So we're saying, here's how much data at the beginning. Okay, here's how much goes to this. I think that move transactions is actually going to be quite large for the overworld. So uh, we're going to put one here, right? And we're just going to keep, going to keep doing this, right? So this is going to be bytes after transactions and say accounting bytes for transactions plus equals bytes after transactions minus bytes after per frame info. Okay. Um, We might not need, need to say plus equals. Oh, because this is per record. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so again, similarly. Um, we'll have uh, actions. Saying transactions and actions is confusing. But you know what? That's okay. Is undo state gonna, it already is saved. <laughs> it's been saved for like two years. Okay. Um, what we're looking at here is the higher level part of the code that serializes it into a buffer that then gets saved. Um, why this is separate from the part that records it in the first place, I don't exactly know. It's just the way I wrote it. Maybe not the best way. Uh, okay, so... And then... Um, Bytes before single action, bytes after single action, right? And then we'll say if and 
these are all going to say. Okay, we'll do this. Okay, so I want to at least define all these variables so that we can compile. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Okay. Hey, it compiles. Okay, so this will be enough to give us a little bit of information. Now we're going to want to reset this. Um, Oh, it's in campaign. I was like, where is it? Okay. So we're going to say, here we go. We're going to go reset, undo accounting. All right. And um, report, undo accounting. And we'll pass the builder there just in case. Okay, all this stuff is actually, we don't want these variables to exist unless we do. And then we're going to say we have this function and we have this function. I almost wish I had put these in a struct, but eh. Builder string length. Okay, and then heaters.
Okay. We do these, we do these, we do these. Okay, and then the reset will just be like that. Oh yeah. So that should save I don't know why we didn't log that stuff or maybe we did I don't know guys anyway so here we are on the overworld Okay, um, so I did leave this on, right? Yeah. So when we save this, dang it. Did I mess something up? Oh, that's a quite a short file length. Okay, well, we got our logging. I wonder if I broke it somehow. Oh, I did. I did. So comments are bad <laughs> sometimes. So at the beginning of the stream, I saw this comment that said, hey, if we didn't destruct this, we wouldn't need to keep it around. And I was like, oh, yeah, I kind of vaguely remember that. That was from the time when we had destructors. So I went and put it on the stack. Problem is, we passed that freaking thing to another thread, so it needs to be allocated with a long life now. It's just, I, it, the reason why is different, but the comment was no longer right. Anyway, so eight megabytes and constantly swapping. The transactions is six megabytes. That is nutty. I am not surprised at all, but yeah, it makes me a little bit, a little bit sad, um, but not that sad because almost all of that, like those, those transactions are fixable to be very small.
kind of. I don't know if I actually want to do it tonight. This is actually, this actually makes it kind of easy. Um, it makes it kind of easy in that, hey, if we can get this one thing down, that's three quarters of our size. Um, it really makes it kind of pointless to focus on other things. And then after that's done, it could be like, oh, we could be smart about this. I mean, I guess I start doing this tonight. And maybe we'll at least do part of it. Maybe we'll do all of it. It's a little, hmm. The way that I'm thinking about solving this. So most of the, some of these transactions are like the player moving but the, almost all of it is lily pads moving that are like off the screen, right? So, and, and this is not the only level that has a li lot of lily pads, although it probably has the most by far. And we're just saving all these big structures for those. And most of those big structures um, do not contain any useful information. Um, so, There are several things we could do here right away. One is we could just not save certain things if it's a Lily transaction. That would at least cut that in half. Um, but the thing about Lily transactions is they're synced in a certain way um, that makes it just highly compressible. So all you need to know is the IDs of the Lilies, which are constant anyway, right? And so you could even put those like IDs right now are four bytes, but you could actually put them in one byte if there's not 255 lilies on the level. Um, and... I mean, we could do other stuff too. We could like sleep lily pads if you're beyond a certain distance from the area. Um, like I do, we could get this down by at least a factor of 10, um, probably more. Probably more. Yeah, the other thread is saving this all to disk um, because that takes time and we don't want to block the frame rate on it. Although in principle, like even serializing this stuff probably takes time. So um, we probably should just pass a copy of the whole undo system off to the other thread, right? But that could be a thing we do later if, if we find it necessary. 140 ECDs. That's a lot too. Like I feel like most of that is going to be something stupid like sound effects or something that we're recording that we shouldn't. Um, or maybe we record a bunch of stuff from level startup that we shouldn't. 
Uh, so, so this also can probably go down by at least an order of magnitude. So that gets this eight megabyte save file down to 800K at least, which is still way too big, um, but a lot smaller. Like that starts to be small enough that we could actually run a play test with it or something, right? Yeah, there is no reasonable Linux environment, so I don't know, I don't know, understand the question. Like Visual Studio is very poopy, but uh, at least it's a thing that can be used. At least it doesn't talk to a debugger through a text pipe and get out of sync all the time. Now the complication is Lily transaction also has supports in it. Um, so I am not sure what to do about that. F for the initial version, I could just um, save them out as normal moves. Like I could filter out the Lily moves and the supports. Supports are the thing you didn't understand from there. I mean, support is just when you're riding on something and it moves, it brings you with it, right? That's what a support move is. Okay. Now we do have flags. We do have the Lily transaction flagged, right? So I can look for that flag. And well, why don't we just look for that flag and count how much we are spending on that. And then, then we can Weissman score that, right? Um, that said, it's going to be a little bit hard really to Weissman score it because we kind of can't save load the same thing right now. And I don't really necessarily desire to, uh, oh, I got to fix this other problem. Hold on that I added. Um, law. Okay, so Okay, let's just make sure that works Uh 
Something you noticed the other day is a lily movement target sliding ahead of where the character wanted to go. When do Don't worry about that, dude. Just don't fucking... It's to be worked on. Like, you have to watch the whole five-hour video that I did with Sean or Casey or someone about how the system works. If you don't watch that, there's not much point in me answering the question. All right. Um... Here we go. It'll it'll answer a lot of questions that you would have. It may not answer all of them, but it will answer some. Okay. So You know what? I'm going to use a new feature. Here's my new feature. Um, Um, let's say Thank you for pasting the link. That is the right video. Okay, that's the new, the new feature is it is easy to print the commas so we can frickin' see. Let me actually do that before this so that we get that in the header as well. So you can just set that for all integers, right? And then let's do that for the top too. And if you're from Finland or whatever, you can make it a period if you want. I don't know why they still do that. They're going to lose there. The world standard is going to be a comma. Might as well get used to it. Tortilla, tortillas? You guys put tortillas between your numbers? It like wouldn't be that bad if it wasn't that both are swapped. It's like you guys use a period where there's a comma and use a comma where there's a period. Like why? It's just completely arbitrary. It's a rich statement coming from an imperial country. Um, uh, uh, hot take, imperial units are better than metric units. No, they totally are way better than metric units. For the same reason, a little bit less extreme, but the same reason that degrees are better than radians. No, imperial units are better because 
they're generally chosen so that the units are easy to make sense of. Right? And have other utilities to them. Like, it is true that being able to multiply and divide by 10 to get your different units is... Uh, is better when you're trying to remember how to convert things, right? It's simpler. But like, that's only one aspect of how we use all these things in our everyday life. Why is degrees better than radians? Because, for example, a right angle is an integer number of degrees, and 360 is a very good number. It's a very wisely chosen number from the ancient days because a lot of small integers divide 360, right? 2 divides 360, 3, 4, 5, 6, not 7, right? Um, 8 does, right? And you can keep going, right? And so if you want to take subunits of that in certain, uh, certain uh, proportions, it's very easy and you still get integers, right? Um, which means you can represent it exactly. Like, have fun representing a right angle exactly in a floating point number when you're using radians. You can't do it. Um, also, it's the same thing with the clock, right? Which, by the way, hasn't been metricized, right? There are 24 hours in a day. Why? Because 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8 all divide 24. That's why it's a good number. It's also the highest number. We all know that 24 is the highest number. Come on. Come on. Also, with temperature, like 70 degrees is room temperature, right? 100 is really hot. <laughs> and like zero is like really cold, right? Now, probably zero is more cold than 100 is hot, but what, it's like a very humanly understandable. And like one degree Fahrenheit is a pretty good, like if it's more than one or two degrees above 70, I'm starting to feel warm, right? But like 71 is like okay for room temperature, right? Um, Celsius, the degrees are too big. Why can't you maintain your record of a right angle as pi times 0.5? Because of numerical precision, you lose some least significant bits when you do that. You also lose, well, it's a long story. Celsius is better understandable for people to grew, grew up with it. I know, but like, just saying Fahrenheit's better. That's all. Dude, what are you even talking about? I use degrees in my engine. 
You're banned for saying dumb stuff. Like, if you haven't done the work, don't say you people, blah, blah, blah. As if, as if, as a web JavaScript tickle programmer, you have moral superiority over somebody who cares about speed. I won't stand for that in this channel. Okay. Um, all right. So we, we are spending most of our space on things that are stupid. This is unfortunate. Um, I don't think we're going to get tonight to the place where we can save and load this in a different format, but we can at least, you know, when I start doing streams at night, I'm never trying that hard to finish things because I'm always a little bit tired from everything else I did in the day. So it's just more like we're getting bonus work done so that when we wake up tomorrow, we're partially done with the thing that we're trying to do, right? Okay, so we're going to make another little Boolean called um, do Lily uh, say, um, let's put a prefix on these because we might have multiple optimizations. History do Lily compression. We're just going to say that, set that to true. Um, okay, so let's go look at the transactions, right? And I have to kind of sort of guess what um, what we need to save. But what I could do is guess that, and then I can save it. I can serialize that piece of data, or even before we serialize, I can take the elements that I think we want to keep, which is like the move in. To start with, we could even just take the full depth vector three delta, although for lilies, we know this is one unit in a direction. So this is really only a number between zero and three, right? Which is two bits. We're not even going to go that small initially, but we can eventually if we want to, right? Um, like this already, right? This is uh, 12 bytes, right? AKA 96 bits. And so we already have a factor of 48. I mean, a factor of 24 compression on this. Um, because 24 is the highest level of compression. What's an ECD? It just stands for entity creation or destruction because all everything in the undo system is bi-directional, right? Each, each like it's, it's almost like, uh, like keyframes or something in an animation where there's a value, but it's bi-directional, right? So, if you want to undo, then you change the values in one direction. And if you want to redo, you do them in the other direction. Um, and so creation or destruction is like a change, but it results in, you know, the entity either being created or destroyed, depending on whether you're undoing or redoing. Like all this stuff, like even this should be like S eight. If either this comment is wrong or this is wrong. We're going to have to look at that. Um, but like the flags we don't need, et cetera. So what I can do is just, if it's a Lily, I can iterate over all the things. I can stash off the values that I want, and then I can use them to create a new move. 
and I can mem comp that against the old one. Problem being, um, this charm info, but maybe we subtract that off. because we don't want to mem comp that, except that for lilies it should be null anyway, so it should actually be fine. Um, like the visual start, visual end should always be zero. Anyway, this is gonna take, yeah, this is probably fiddly enough that we won't even get it done tonight, but we'll see. Like I said, it's bonus work. All right, so so that we have a Weissman score. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I'm going to say accounting bytes for Lily transactions, right? Um, this is a subset of for transactions. Yeah, so we have this is Lily transaction flag here. So when we see that, For single transaction, after single transaction, if dot flags and uh, is Lily transaction, then this plus equals there. Okay. It's like my code is going to be totally pooped up with accounting code, but that's, that's why we need a magical IDE that lets us collapse this. Um, okay. So that's all great. Uh, we need to reset this. And let's just see that work. Okay. Oh, good. I'm not printing the value. So only the computer knows the value, right? And since the computer is smarter than you are, um, that's fine. You don't need to know the value, right? That is a higher proportion of all the transactions than I thought, which means uh, we're probably going to get two orders of magnitude pretty straightforwardly on that.
we'll see. I mean, I'm maybe saying that a little bit preemptively, but okay. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm just, before we ever try to write this to a file in a new way, let's just make sure we can compress and decompress it correctly, right? Um, and in fact, we could keep that code in, in debug builds, uh, or maybe in super debug builds, right? As like, hey, you know, because because you might change the data structure. Like a, a classic thing that happens in programs, right? Is somebody writes this code, right? Uh, like imagine it's Casey writing the walk code for the witness, and then he finishes, and then someone else comes along and doesn't really know how it's supposed to work and changes a bunch of stuff and like everything super breaks and maybe you don't even know that everything super broke because you don't know what it was for, right? Um, so this is a way of putting in stuff like that where it's like, you know, if somebody changes the data structures later and introduces something or like adds something to lilies or whatever, um, you can... Uh, correctly reproduce it. Now, all that said, I expect us to also have a problem in here. Well, I don't know. I, I won't, I won't say that you've done that with your own code. I do that with my own code all the time, dude. Now that I'm working on a compiler and this transactional puzzle game engine that has all sorts of crazy shit going on, like, I just don't remember everything. Also, um, I'm going to turn 20 this year. So, uh, like I'm starting to get old, right? I'm not 24 yet. No, I'm not 24 yet. Yeah, that's why they let you start drinking when you're 21, because you only have three years left. So you need the comfort of alcohol. All right. So um, put the transaction in there too, just in case we need it. Okay, so we're gonna save the following things. Um, uh, delta is, um, is it called linear interpolation? Yeah. Okay, so the delta is um, Like the duration, the duration is going to be constant for all of them, but for the purposes of just doing a single one, we need that. Um, okay, so we're just going to take all the information that we need. We're not going to try to compress these individual pieces yet. We're just going to try to make a new move from those. And then afterward, uh, we'll see what the deal is. 
Okay, so we need the delta is info dot delta. We need save um, ID is single dot entity ID. We need um, We don't need the target because that's fine. Um, we get the duration for now. Let's actually categorize this into stuff from the single move struct and stuff from the move info, which is like a substruct of it. Um, I don't think we can have any of these flags. I don't think any of this. Um, okay, so in the move transaction, I don't think any of this. Um, maybe blocking player. Mm, mm. Okay, so we're going to need um, Oh, you know what? We actually, okay, hold on. We're just doing the single move and below. So the single move contains the move info. We're not going to do the transaction part yet, right? Because we'll just get this working. And the transaction is just an outer thing that has an array of these inside. Yeah, lots of game engine programmers work on games that they don't really like. It's I would say that that is common. Oh, we need Okay, so we're saving these things off. All right, and now we're going to do a thing called new single, right? Um, and that's just a single move. And new info is a new single dot move info. And we're just going to poke all this stuff back with some extra things, right? So, um, we know that's a linear interpolation because all Lily moves are, right? Um, so right now, new info dot delta, oh, save delta, right? Um, uh, new info dot duration saved duration uh, new info dot theta at start oh this is uh, yeah okay Sorry, saved. I keep my brain is not braining. All right, so um, and then new single dot entity ID is saved ID. Now there's a few things.
that we need to set. So, um, and maybe I should clean up some of these things, but um, This is different from the actual physical end on the map because like if you're wrapping, you want to know what direction they're going anyway. Uh, oh, let's save the visual error. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I don't know if we're using that. Oh, uh, So, um, we need to set doubles, um, now the reason I'm putting this in intermediate variables instead of just copying it straight from the thing is because these are going to be the things that we read from a file. They're going to be in a variable. They're not going to be in a struct later. And you know, they're probably going to be converted to be smaller, right? So like saving a two bit number instead of a full vector three, for example. Um, so, Um, so new single dot target equals maybe wrap transaction dot entity manager. Um, maybe I need to pass the proximity grid. No, it takes the manager. Uh, and then the position, which is um, okay. So this is like, what is the actual coordinates of this in the world space, which might be in the opposite direction of how it's going if you wrapped around a border. Um, That might be it. Okay, so here we're going to go. We're not going to use memcomp because we want to know at what byte it comes out of sync because we're assuming that it will. So um, we're going to say, so first we can report this like just what byte it is, but because we have the information about all the struct members and stuff, we can then look up what struct member was wrong, but first let's just get it figuring it out, right? So, um, uh, uh, differing byte is uh, compare um, my compare. I don't know. There might be compares all over the place, right? Uh, single new single. Um, Let's make that polymorphic and type safe and stuff. Um, so if differing byte all right, um, we'll assert false and very close to a hundred percent chance that, that this fails because I forget things or haven't thought about things or we haven't even looked at this data. So some of these values could be set that I don't think should be set. 
and that sort of thing. Okay, so, um, all right, so my compare Right, so we're just going to put these in U8 and compare them byte by byte. If we don't find a difference, we return minus 1. Otherwise, we just say, uh, well, if mem A sub I not equal to mem B sub I. Boy, have fun doing this in Rust. Unsafe. Uh, return um, I. All right. Great. Whoops. What? What are you complaining about? Oh, there's no. Okay. For some reason, I locally scoped this a long time ago, and there's really no reason to do that. Theta at start. Is that in single move? Yes. Okay. Targets. That's in move info. What is my problem? start. Do I want to filter out lilies specifically? Yes, I am doing only lilies specifically because I know a lot about them and that is what lets me compress the data, right? It is compressible because we know how they behave. They're not random things in the world. Okay, well that wasn't good. We didn't set the entity manager on that transaction, I guess. Oh, because we copy them and the manager isn't live. But now we have it on the undo handler, right? Well, we certainly have it up here. Actually, we have it in the frickin' context, right? No. Dang it, bro. Okay. Um, let's put it in the context. Is it in campaign? Yeah. Let's just do this. Okay, so um, 
where was this? This was in down here somewhere. I said auto old, what? This is not C++. Byte difference. What the fuck? Who broke fucking local variables? What the fuck? Am I going to have to go to X64 because LVM will not fucking tell me local variable? What is going on here? Ah. <sighs> The things, the problems you have making a compiler. I can't, okay, let's try it. Oh, I guess it outputted, right? Wait, it closed the window? Visual Studio always annoyingly leaves the stupid window open, and the one time it doesn't, I want to know the information. One oh one. We made it a hundred and one bytes into the thing. Uh, however, I don't know how far that is. Uh, let's say Let's go x64. Maybe we'll be able to see the goddamn variable. Maybe not, depending on where in the compiler the bug is. This time it's at 176. You know what? Um, we might need a smarter compare. Okay, so maybe if Casey is still on the stream, maybe he has an opinion on the following. And maybe before I even say, are you there still, Casey? Um, because I'm not sure. Okay. So here is, I'm doing a thing. I haven't really actually done this exact thing in this language before, right? But I'm doing this thing where I memcomp two structs to make sure that they're right. And you could imagine other purposes like, you know, mem things are in a hash table and you memcomp them to make sure it's the right one or like, who knows, right? Sometimes you want to compare things and Memcomp is a very, you could call it, the kids call it data-oriented way of doing that as opposed to C++ where you invoke an equals operator and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, well, the thing is, as with C, there are holes in the struct, right? And the question is, what's in there and does it screw up your compare or not? 
Um, and like, there could be, there could be a language level guarantee that like, hey, there are zeros in the padding, right? Like it's guaranteed to be zero or not. And of course, the upside of that is you can do this stuff. The downside is there's probably at least a little bit of a performance cost, although it might be negligible because all these structs tend to have initializers, right? Uh, we don't have constructors like in C++ where you run general code, but what we do have is, you know, like a static read-only data representable, like, oh, this member is seven, this member is hello and whatever, right? So um, maybe that's a flag that you could turn on the struct to say that the holes are zero. Um, I don't know. Do you, Casey, do you care about this kind of thing? Do you ever, right? Obviously, if you're doing it C style, like old C style, when you allocate the thing, you would just mem set it to zero and who cares? But the thing is, we don't tend to do that in this language because of initializers and initializers are super useful. Question is just what's, what's between them, right? Alternatively, you could get rid of the holes. Well, I don't want to have to get rid of the holes, right? I want my compare function to work on general data structures. Like, why are there holes in the first place? Um, we are basically doing the same thing as C uh, with regard to aligning things, right? That may not make sense in the modern world, right? So that's a whole conversation we could have. I mean, keep in mind, I started this programming language and started doing that stuff frickin' seven years ago, right? So decisions that seemed more relevant seven years ago may be less relevant now and so forth, right? Um, now, okay, well, there's two things. There's one is there's automatic alignment between members, right? Uh, two is you can declare alignment of a struct member. Like if you've got some SIMD thing or whatever that has to be 16 byte aligned or 64 byte aligned or I don't know what, you can declare that alignment on that member in the struct and then there's just going to be a hole there, right? Um, so yeah. What about a separate costlier comparison? Yeah, so that's the other thing is, okay, so we have the type information for both of these structs. So I actually could, and this is probably what I will do, is just mem copy or mem comp them field by field. The problem is that's a giant pain in the ass because if the field is a struct, you have to like recurse on that and mem comp that field by field, which I mean, it's not that bad, but it's just like, mm hmm. It's a little bit of an annoying recursive thing. Like I wanted this to be simple and easy, right? But it's more annoying. You're not sure you have a strong opinion if I'm targeting lower end arm because you don't really have a lot of knowledge. Um, we are 64 bit only right now, and that's likely to be the case for the, at least the middle term future. So, Anything that's 32-bit, I don't care about right now. Also, it's worth pointing out that unlike C, so this is like where, this is actually the thing that makes it a more questionable decision. Unlike C, the alignment is not arbitrary. It's defined by the programming language, not the target platform. So structs don't change size as you compile them to different things. We just pick alignments that generally should be okay, right? Now that may not make sense. <laughs> um, so, so that policy may have to change anyway.
Like, I mean, if we did a port to the mill or something, I, I, maybe structs have to fucking change. Um, but I think if we did, it would be flaggable. Like, like even if you're compiling a lot of your structs for a weird architecture, you want to be able to still have a struct that's got a layout convention that just matches your file or whatever so that you can just read into it and use it quickly, right? That's a whole thing I haven't thought about. Regular memcomp is fine. You can't think of real circumstances where you want the compiler to skip holes. Um, but I'm not talking about skipping holes. I'm just saying if there are holes that are not initialized, then you can't memcomp the block, right? That, that statement makes sense. You don't want padding on X64. Yeah, maybe I should remove padding by default. You still want it, because we want to make it easy to interface with C, we still want you to be able to declare C padding so that you can interface with C libraries and stuff, right? Um, so that would be a thing. What is the earliest Intel chip? Are there any Intel chips where you will fault? Are there any 64-bit Intel chips where you will fault if a pointer is not 8-byte aligned? Aside from freaking Itanium or whatever, which we're not going to do. Don't you need padding for arrays of structs? No. Why would you? If you don't need padding for the inside of a struct, why do you need it for the border of the struct? Why don't you want padding on X64? Because, okay, so the problem is, as you pad the struct, you're aligning things, which used to be good, um, but you're making the struct bigger, right? Which means you have worse cache locality. And memory these days is really important. Casey, what do you do in C? Do you just declare, is there some kind of like a line one that you put on the struct, like pragma line one or something? The place you will see the fault is if you use a memory operand on a non-vex instruction. Oh, what? No. But we... uh, well, I mean, then we would have to change our whole code generator. Um, well, except maybe not because uh, our code generator is dumb right now, but For vex code, you never fault. We don't do any vex code. For non vex code, you will fault. See, that's really scary then, because like, you don't, dude, I don't know what MM256 is. Like, you're talking about shit that I don't do. AV, I've never touched AVX. But like we, okay, so we actually had someone in our beta crash already and I haven't fixed this because we were using the AES instructions for hashing and they didn't have support for that. So like those were only, like if you have a CPU from 2006 or something, you don't even have those. So like, and there's this whole, you know, there's like, there's also a difference between what do we assume for the compiler itself 
which I'm okay assuming a relatively more modern thing. But to say that the compiler only generates binaries that will run on CPUs that support certain instructions, um, No, I mean, this guy, it must have been a 64-bit Intel chip, right? Like, you just don't use memory ops. But, like, then either we're back in the business of outputting multiple binaries, which I think is an interesting idea, but we're not going to do that for a while. Uh, or everybody has to not use memory ops, right? And that just seems really bad. Like also now that we have inline assembly, that means if you type your inline assembly, you can't use memory operands, which like people are gonna fuck up all the time. The difference in speed between VEX and non-VEX is really dramatic. The ASM can undo that for you. See, okay. Um, See, the thing about that is, um, like, we okay, we don't generate frickin' vector code, so I don't know what you mean by the difference being dramatic um, for scalar code. Uh, for, for assembly, here's the thing. Part of the allure to me of assembly is that the compiler doesn't fucking change what you put in. It does what you said, right? I'm not sure I want it to be in the business of rewriting what I put in. Um, maybe I could put an explicit flag on the thing that says do this. But then people are going to forget that. So I don't know. Like, I feel like the value delivery of assembly is that the compiler does not F with it. But, but, you know, these are all things that we're thinking through and we have to come up with a realistic solution that optimizes a many dimensional space. So general purpose instructions don't have the faulting behavior. Wait, really? VEX X64 is the way to do high performance code. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll think about that when we try to do our actual optimizing backend, which we're still a ways from doing. Um, I don't know what LLVM outputs, but as you know, it's probably kind of random. Um, But I also, again, maybe it's because I have never worked on it, but I do not have any faith in auto vectorization. I don't think it works, right? Like, I think the user has to write vectorized code to get high performance from vector instructions. You know, maybe I'm wrong about that, but. Um, You do VEX if you have AVX plus, otherwise we do legacy prefix bytes. Do you mean like if I type a VEX instruction, you emulate it? No, that sounds nuts, right? You just get 16 byte string compare in one instruction. Uh, I mean, okay. We can use that to optimize string comparison, I guess, but like that's like your program isn't doing that most of the time, but maybe, I don't know. You, you know, this would be a useful, if you, if you want to do a stream sometime where we talk about this, you could educate me on this and also the audience. We could do it subscriber only, handmade hero subscribers only. Um, because, uh, like, I, I literally don't know what's in there. Like, every time I just look at the frickin' AVX instructions, my eyes glaze over, because there's so many of them. Um, yeah. 
so, and, and again, this wouldn't be for immediate plans of mine, but just in terms of long-term planning, right? Um, it's like, I don't know, maybe we just leave structs padded by default for C interoperability purposes because people are going to have problems. I don't know. I, I, I need to think. Eh, that seems like a bad reason to define that permanently, though. I don't know, man. I need to think about it. Okay, so vector instructions will fault if they're not aligned, but non-vector instructions won't. But you're saying that everybody's going to have vector instructions anyway. So... So you you just wouldn't use memory operand with vector instruction. I mean, I, I guess that, that kind of makes sense, but I need to think it through in terms of what, what that means. Could I use metaprogramming to build a bitmap to XOR away all the padding? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a number of approaches that you could use. I wouldn't want to destructively modify the memory though. That seems a little weird and bad, um, but we could just do sub mem comps, right? It just takes more instructions. Yeah, I, I, I dig that. Although, I mean, code size is pretty big these days. Like, don't vector instructions all have monster prefixes as well? Like, I don't know. We'll talk about it. I, I, I would like to do a conversation about this sometime when I am maximally awake. And, um, yeah, because I, I literally just have never used a vector instruction ever for anything. I mean, I've used MMX, right? <laughs> For braid, I did MMX four at a time particle stuff um, back when MMX got floats, right? Or SSE2, that's what it was. I used SSE2, people. Yeah, I just, I don't know how to bridge the gap between using them, using AVX all the time in a hand way versus having the compiler somehow do it. Like, I don't, unless we build in types that are like N wide, which I kind of don't want to complicate the language by doing because the reason this is taking so long to release the compiler to the people is because the language is so damn complicated, right? I mean, it's way simpler than C++, all right, but um, there's just a lot to deal with, right? So adding even more, I'm wary of, but yeah, we should talk, we should talk about it. Wouldn't any vector ops be done in inline assembly? I mean, certainly people could do that for sure. And if we make it low friction enough, which it pretty much is, uh, that's great. Um, However, I mean, if it's, if it's supposedly ubiquitous enough, like Casey is saying, then you're sort of saying people are writing a large percentage of their code in assembly, which doesn't necessarily seem right. Although maybe it is because like, hey, maybe if that's where you would have used intrinsics, Casey, are you saying you would use intrinsics for these normally? Um, intrinsics are more convenient? Not really. I don't think so. Not in this, like, you maybe haven't seen this assembly language. Yeah. 
So you're basically dropping down to an assembly level of expression every time you want to do this. Um, but you still want to do it frequently because you get a big boost out of it. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this in depth sometime. Steam hardware survey says AVX2 is 82%. 82% is a recipe for so many support tickets that you will go out of business. <laughs> and so many bad reviews. 82% is not enough. And that's among gamers, right? So we would have to be, if, if we're talking about today, we would have to generate multiple binaries, which is an interesting idea. But again, I'm worried about because it's complicated ultimately, but you know. Okay, so the question is, do I do a hierarchical memcomp? See, that's going to be really annoying because it's going to recurse down into all the vector threes and stuff, um, which is silly because vector three is aligned anyway. I could exclude vector three from that explicitly and vector two maybe. Just zero the holes for now. That's not really an option, unfortunately. Um, it is. It is for one of these. I could. I could mem set the destination one and run the initializer on it. But for the other one, I can't. Well, let's try it. You know what? I think I actually can in this case. Let's try it because, all right. So here we're going to go mem set new single zero size of single move. All right. Well, let's just say, let's be paranoid about it. Um, and then uh, initializer. Uh, I'm just going to make a macro for this clear new single. All right. So clear. All right. Um, If any, uh, any on X, right? Otherwise, nothing. So, because it's, it, if there's no initializer set, that just means the whole thing is zero. And so you just, the mem set is fine. Um, all right. So we're gonna run clear on that. And then, um, here, We have this copy move transaction. Blah. See this part, we're using just an array to array copy here. I could just add, let me just add a thing to that. Oh, wait, that's not even, oh, that's no, in, um,
Oh wait, it's a fucking mem copy. Any? Oh, this is stupid. I'm being I'm being a dumb dumb. So the problem here is I can't I can't actually. All right, I'll just I'll just go back and do it. In, in my program. All right, so here we're going to go. All right, this is gross. Oh, clear, single. Actually, it's not gross. All right, it's it's really stupid, but um, undeclared and for clear because it's in file scope. What? Oh, we're still <laughs> we're still in file scope. Cause that okay. Yeah. Great. Um. All right. So maybe we weren't even hitting a hole, right? It's just. Yeah. I hope I didn't. I might have also done something dumb, but hopefully not. All right. Whoops. I double hit enter. And yeah, now Visual Studio isn't keeping the thing open. Now we're relying on the initializer to be structural and not override the zeros. Yes, but when you wrote the compiler, you know how it works. And I happen to know that the way this is implemented I think you never know there could be bugs and stuff, but I think, uh, I think it is not a problem. Assert failed. Okay. 176. So maybe we weren't even hitting zeros. All right. So next is, uh, let's figure out the name of the member that that is so that I don't have to do a bunch of tedious things. Um, Okay, uh, info is type info uh, single move um, for info dot members. Um, um, I zero is it dot offset in bytes i1 is it dot offset in bytes plus it dot runtime size uh, if differing byte Found is a string, and then if found print um, differing element is whatever offset whatever. Okay, you know what? Okay. Uh, found dot name found dot offset in bytes else print All right. runtime size what oh yes uh, it dot type dot runtime size sorry Whoops, let's run this from the debugger. Uh, 
Okay. Flags. Let's make sure, let's print out the file and line number of that. Oh no, I selected a character. Okay, good. God only knows what can happen when you select a character in the Visual Studio console. It's bad news. Um, oh, maybe we don't have line info in the type. All right. I think there's only one thing called flags. Uh, did I just forget to set it because I saved it? Um, I thought I saved the, oh no, because I was looking at the transaction and saving those flags. And then I said, no, let's not do that. Um, on the move info, there are flags. Mm. All right, saved move info flags is info dot flags. All right. See, we're already easily doing things that would be kind of a pain in the ass in C++. Okay, um, what? Still offset 176. I saved move info flags is info dot flags. New info dot flags is saved. Like what? Okay. This is why it's helpful to do this stuff in a contained environment like this, where you can see what the hell is going on. Uh, because if you loaded this from a file, you would be like, I have nothing to compare it to. Now I have to do a bunch of legwork. But um, here it's like we have all the values, right? So I could say, uh, info.flags. Fuck. What is going on? Why can't I see the variables? What the shit is happening? This is like, this is why, why we should never do software. Like I have no variables here for some reason. Okay. Here's, here's how we solve that problem. Um, I don't seem to have it either in either backend, which is weird. I mean, that sort of points at where the problem is, but, um, okay. We're just going to go, um, info is info, new info is new info, right? And, uh, info, new info, single move, no, uh, move info. Um, well, this is yet another thing that I got to fix. Whoa. Holy fuck. All right. We did something scary. This is Friday the 13th. Oh, did I? Hold on. Is 
Is that what happened? Interesting. So this is a bug. When this desugars, it like doesn't. All right. All right. Sometimes we have really stupid crash bugs in the compiler. I, this is an easy one. I'm not going to fix it right now because I don't want to derail, but it's easy. Um, okay. I can delete this. We did that one. All right. All right. Anyway, maybe I just can't perceive the variable being a mere human. It's true. It's true. Dude, what the fuck? Okay. Why does assertion failed not make your cursor visible? This is like the worst thing. All right. Um, okay, what was I even doing? Oh, yeah, I wanted to look at info info flags new info flags okay now i kind of don't trust Is my comparison broken? My really stupid comparison? These are both zero, bro. What? Did I get this wrong? What? Okay, here's what we do. Let's hope we can see variables in here. If we can't, which we probably can't, but I have no idea why that would have broken. Flags have indirection. I don't even know what that question means. They're flags, dude. Okay. Um, okay, wait. This says they're different all of a sudden. Excuse me? Okay, we can see variables in this function. Okay, wait. Mem B. I, I have no idea what's going on right now. This is just one of those times. I'm so confused. Mem B. 
Oh, shit. This is wrong, guys. The local variable is on the stack, but this is a pointer in global space, so we don't... Ah, fuck you! Visual Studio is such an asshole. Okay, now this is making sense, all right? Because here, these and then these are the same. So they're not equal. This was wrong that I had looked at before, which is why it was so confusing. So this comparison is correct. What do I think about Steam Deck? Um, I think Cuomo really should get fired because he's bad. And I think Marjorie Taylor Greene also is a person. Um, okay. So we get our differing byte. The flags are different. Um, so, but they're not like, mm, see, this is the weird part. Okay. I'm just verifying that these are, yeah, those are at the same offset. So the move info is very high up in the struct. Um, Yeah, so we have two four byte IDs and then this, right? Okay. Um, This isn't move info dot flags. It's a different, oh God, single, okay, yeah. Single move has a flags field. I should have, I should have reported it, but I didn't. In fact, I should have known, guys, this is what happens when you're tired or like you're not at 100%. We can't ever report anything from move info because I was just reporting members from single move. It's confusing. Okay, anyway. Okay, we're not copying that flags, so that took me half an hour to figure out. Um, but again, it would have taken longer if you're writing it to a file. So that's why we do that later. Okay. Um, oops, dot flags. Right. And then that's all. That's all. Okay, very stupid. Very stupid and dumb. All right. Here we go. Here's, here's the theme song. Are you ready? This is either the theme song for what I did for the past half hour or for Microsoft console.
assuming I can find it on the YouTubes. Ready? Everybody welcome. Wow, good thing I didn't uh song makes a lot more sense if you know San Francisco. a different offset now. We're not as far in. go that that was the theme song of, of what was happening okay um <laughs> so Um, yeah, I don't know why. So my theory about this is actually, we ended up at an earlier offset, but I think that's because this is a different move, right? It's like we succeeded on some moves and then we found a later move, etc. Now the problem is I don't, I don't get lazy field reporting, um, I guess I should write a little thing that if it's in move info, right? Offset eight. Yeah, if it's in move info, um,
Okay, we're, we're going to factor this out. We're going to say uh, found is find member um, differing byte in single move. All right. So we just pass the type and the thing. Um, all right, we're just going to factor this and make sure it compiles. So uh, find member uh, byte is s64 and dollar sign t is a type, right? And then um, type info t. Uh, this is uh, return it. This goes type info struct member. And here we return nullarino if we don't find it. Uh, just make sure that compiles. Okay, great. So here's the magic we recurse. We say if uh, found dot type dot, I think it's kind, right? No, it's type. Type info tag. Yeah, found at type dot type is equal to struct. It's a struct recursing, right? And then we say um, oh no. Okay, here. Let's go uh, TIS is, because we won't know it. We won't know it at compile time. And we don't need T anywhere down there. So that's great. OK, so here we go. We're going to say uh, T is single move while uh, one uh, oh, uh, type in oh, info is type info, except I called something info up there. So it's this. OK, we go found, right? Let's factor this out because we want to, don't want to dereference a nully there. We'll just put a break at the bottom. <laughs> it's always fun to do that. Um, and we'll say TIS is cast type in info struct uh, island dot type. And um, offset minus equals or a uh, differing byte. Minus equals found dot offset in bytes and continue. Okay. Negative land is all. It's all public domain. Okay. Oops, differing element not found. Maybe I messed it up. Um, Let's just run this from the debugger so we don't get these annoying ass windows. You thought that an empty four is an infinite loop? Maybe in your programming language.
That is not, however, how it is in this programming language. Um, okay. Struct name move info. Like what? what? Why did I fail all of a sudden? I just want to know where it is. I'm getting tired. Um, that's correct. So move info is like 128. So 124 should be at the very end. That might be enough information for us to do it, but I don't know why we're not finding it. It's in push or pull direction. Maybe that's uninitialized. Let's see. Undeclared. All right. It looks like zeros. Does this debugger have offset of? I don't know. Anyway, um, one twelve. So um, 24. Oh, it's a hole at the end. There's a hole at the very end, guys. I don't know. I'm actually a little bit confused. Um, about why the other stuff we did didn't fill that hole. This this actually makes me worried. Am I wrong that it's a hole right there? But that that's what it seems like. Oh. Okay, now like we wrote a corrupted file at some point. Oh, shoot. Uh, we are saving this thing. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know if this will work here. Let's see. We're trying to load things with that zero in it now because I just stuck it there. Just stuck it there. Shouldn't size of include that. You include what? The padding? It does, it's just we're trying to look that up in a struct field and it's off the end, right? Dang it. Okay. Oh, now it's 93. It's also in a fucking hole. So whatever I did to fill the holes didn't work. Um, right, here's what I can do to verify that. Um, we're just going to print everything um, here. Wait. Oh, not there. Um, here. I don't know how many of these. We could go through a lot of these if we're succeeding on a lot of dudes, but... Okay. So that'll print the things. Actually, you know what? And then we'll say um, if byte, because these are in increasing order, uh, if byte is uh, less than i is a little bit redundant with the previous thing, but there we go. Initialize everything. We did initialize everything to zero, dude. Like, Holy crap, we did that like an hour ago, theoretically. Obviously, it's not that easy, and there's a mistake somewhere. Or I'm just very stupid. That's the other possibility. Okay, so what did we print? Yeah, 92 to 93... Wait, but this is inclusive. Why didn't we find it? I thought I checked that correctly. Oh, see. Oh, wait, no, 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 never mind. I didn't, okay. In my brain, I had done it one way, but I didn't. So this is one byte past the end, right? So like this thing, I mean, we should probably change this anyway, but um, this thing is a bool that's taking up four frickin' bytes because that's just the way I am. Um, why don't I put that in flags? Because I'm bad at programming. Um, that's definitely the kind of thing we will do later. But, um, so this is really just byte 92, right? 93 is after it. So this is again in the whole 93, 94, 95. I don't know why that's not zeroed. I thought I zeroed it, but... Oh, okay. So inside, there's a bunch of different places that make move infos and fill them out and pass them to add move. So we successfully cleared all the zeros in single move. We did not successfully clear all the zeros in move info. I could write a quick thing that detects holes and zeros it and assumes 
like, yeah, we could just say zero holes before we do the mem comp. I don't know. Then that'll mess something up. It'll write a zero somewhere. Um, it's about bedtime for me, I think. Um, but this is great because we have our bonus work done toward the thing. So far, we're just failing on holes, which is ironic in a sense because we're looking for problems with the actual data members and we're tripping up on holes. But that at least means that we're mostly kind of okay with the data members maybe. Let's just see um, it index 17. We got 17 moves through before we got tripped up by a hole um, out of, holy fuck. There's 155 lily pads on this level. Let's, let's verify that. Yeah, I think I'm going to write something to clear the holes in the morning or something. It's just if I do it now, I'm tired enough that there's a decent possibility that I'll make a stupid bug. It's actually really easy. That loop that we just did, right? Um, uh, this loop, you just, you know, we're computing the end of the previous member and we look at the beginning of the next member. And if there's any space between that, we mem set that, right? And you just do that. And then you recurse down into any substructs. And that's it. Um, I just don't want to do it while I'm tired because even though it's easy, higher probability of making a mistake. And we might as well have something. It's always eat when you leave something easy for the morning. It's always like nice, right? Because it's like, ah, I wake up and I know something I can do. Are there seriously? There's no way there's 155 lilies. That, that doesn't sound right. There's no way. There are more than 155. They all aren't moving. Are you fucking kidding me? You expect me to deal with this. It'll be fine. We've got two orders of magnitude and so forth. We're going to have to do some special. I, we're going to have to freeze them if you're a little bit far and whatever. Whatever. What if a frozen screen lily pad crosses to an unfrozen screen? That's bad news bears. Are there really that many right here? I mean, I guess so. Yeah, I've already counted 75 and I'm not even to most of the ones over here. Although there must be some more somewhere else, but worst case scenario, you can just run a compressor. Well, if you give the compressor a bunch of garbage, like if you give the compressor a bunch of needlessly big data to start with, it doesn't know anything about your data. So it's going to just do generic compressor things, which might be pretty good. Like I think we would get a good compression ratio on this data. Um, but like, like I said, we can get like two orders of magnitude probably by doing what we're doing. So that's just way better than putting it in a generic compressor. All right. Let's see if we could raid somebody. in the science and technology area. 
who is programming we can go to Adam C Eunice again terminal emulation library development in C plus plus 20 oh boy that I, I was thinking maybe that's someone doing Casey style stuff nope Nope. Nope. We could do Chaocalypse again. We we raided him a long time ago. What are we thinking here, people? C plus plus twenty. We'll do Chaocalypse because he was cool. And we haven't raided him in a long time. All right. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you later on. I hope you are a mature audience because it says this channel is intended for mature audiences. <laughs>